What's up and good morning guys. Welcome back to another video. Gunner, you ready buddy? What are you doing? Hey, can you say hi to everybody? Can you say hi? No? We're looking? So I don't know if you guys can see behind me, but we're currently sitting in the Home Depot parking lot. Me and Gunner are getting ready to go inside. We're going to grab some uh, materials that we're going to be using. Uh, not exactly on the RAM project, but we're going to be using to help us build the RAM project. We got to get some sheets of plywood and some 2x4s. We're basically going to use this to make jigs and to draw out all of our steel. Um, that way when we go to assemble and weld everything, it just kind of goes together hopefully easily. So we're going to switch over to GoPro mode. Gunner, you got to wake up, buddy, if we're going to go on Home Depot. Can you get up? Wake up. Ready? Let's go. Let me make sure I have a leash for Gunner in here. I'm pretty sure I do. Let's see. Yep. Always carry a leash. Nope. If we can get it out. There we go. You're the best pup, Gunner. You're the best pup. Uh-oh. You want to know the worst feeling in Home Depot? Showing up to an empty rack of what you want. Because now that means you got to find somebody. They got to get a forklift. This is going to be an ordeal. Gunner, we got time for this? I guess we do. Well, I just found somebody that works here. And uh, he went and found the crew that's going to get it down for us. He did inform me it's going to be a little bit because they're getting something else down first. So, uh... Yeah, this is the only problem with Home Depot. Now we wait. All right, we got our lumber all loaded up back there. It only took, uh, I'd say, 30 minutes waiting for them to come get it down. And then the guy just does not seem like he was having a good day today. He walks over, he's like, what do you want? I'm like, some plywood? How long you got to wait? I'm like, I don't know. How long is it going to take? But hey, you know, it is what it is. Let's get our day started and, uh, you know, not be upset today. <laughs> well, good morning, Dave. Oh, this is a grand market. Right now. Pleasure, pleasure. Oh, as well, as well. Glad to see you. Oh, wow, dude, you actually... <laughs> I was going to make a joke about how much you've done, but you've yeah. done a lot. I'm impressed, it's, dude. It's significant, man. It's significant, you how, know. How's, it, how's it looking so far? Well, you know, like, uh -oh. the, the angle the angle's going to come and get us. We kind of knew it going right. in. We kind of knew it going in. But uh, basically, I mean, if this is our top, so let's kind of imagine it flipping upside down. Yep. So, essentially, this is what was kind of where we were headed, I guess. Right. Like, even though the 2D sort of stuff, you know, shows it as what's different. So I only have two hands, but basically, you can see how that's no good. How we really want it to be like that. What happens when you do that with a different angle? Uh, it's not really, you know, it's not really helping. I tried to warn you, Dave, we were going to get into this issue. Well, you're a lot smarter than me, you know, so <laughs> I, you know, But you're better looking. I, well, you know, everybody gets one or eight things. So, you know, one thing we don't have is a super sweet, like, 2,000-pound welding table. But, you know, we can make do with what we got, right, Dave? That's what we picked up all this material for today. Well, was to kind of, I don't know if we want a 2,000-pound welder. Do we want Not one? without a forklift. Fair. Yeah. I think that's I think that's an accurate statement. Maybe there, we should get a forklift and a two thousand pound welding table. Let's get a forklift and then go from there. Okay. All right. All right. So right now we're kind of just constructing our table. Um, and obviously the plywood is going to sit on top, and that allows us to mark out all of our measured mounts. Great purchase, Dave. I mean. Who knew that in fabricating steel, the track saw would come in handy? So in case you guys are wondering why we're cutting some plywood, this is going to be essentially our jig that's going to fit inside of the inner upper rectangle. Now Dave's coming in and he's cutting off just 45s out of the corners because obviously that's where it's going to get welded up and we don't want the plywood to uh, catch on fire. We do have a fire extinguisher over there, Dave, so we're good to go, buddy. Clamping it down. So now you can kind of see how our, our jig method is working. Like Dave has uh, drilled a couple holes here in the plywood deck. Now we can slide some clamps in, get everything clamped nice and tight and square, and then we start welding. Dave, where's our welding plug? Oh no. I got it, buddy. It's behind door number one. 
I think I may have had a dream about our electrician. Uh, do we need to tell your wife about it? I better not. All right, turn the welder on. Turn the gas on. Turn the cooler on. All right, we're all jigged up. Welder's ready. Dave's gonna go around and tack everything up. All right, so we've got the preliminary welds on all the corners. Uh, I gotta run to the welding supply house right now and grab some flap wheels so we can grind all that smooth and then we're gonna flip it over, weld the other side, flip it over, weld the inside and keep chugging along. Dave's over here just being Dave, you know, mastermind, computer. I'll tell you what, while you're gone, I'm gonna cut this, uh, this other piece of wood here okay at these dimensions and then and then i'll grind the top now i don't appreciate the grinding myself yeah dave's not a fan of grinding that's why all the stuff you'll see that is designed up in-house here is really meant to not be ground down but for me this one i think we need to grind some of these welds down just to make it look more like automotive finish i don't know maybe i'm crazy but let's run to the uh welding supply house all right, we have made it in. Parking's a little bit tight over here. Got a lot of trucks going in. So we've got our uh, grinding flap discs here. And this store actually grew up with the family that owns it. And they're actually turning this into, they're kind of trying to reinvent the welding store. Um, they've got a ton of locations and they're huge, but they really want to like dial down the next generation of welding. So I was just in there talking to my buddy and he said, give us about a month and the store will be like fully built out and I would love to give you kind of like a tour of everything we got going on with the automation and all kinds of cool stuff. So he also said, feel free to bring that along for the channel. So hopefully uh, I'll be able to give you guys kind of a cool tour of uh, their welding shop. All right, let's see how far our buddy Dave got. Looking good, Dave, looking good. So when I do it, uh, we, we weld, we tack and then weld the top. You know, like kind of like you're tightening a tire or whatever. And then with everything, I'll clamp down, blah, blah, blah. And then go do something else. Let it cool down, right? And then flip it, clamp it all again. Oh, wait, before you flip it, grind it down a little bit so that you get it. So, so it's flat. Like, I hate grinding. So <laughs> Rhino offered to do some grinding. I'll so. clean it up, Dave. I'll clean it up. You just got it flat. Yeah, so then you get flat, flip it over, weld the other side, and go do something else. Let it chill out. And then, once you have both, both of these sides, that rectangle ain't going nowhere, and then you can clamp it up here, and then... Uh, now, when Dave's saying, let it chill out, the reason he's saying that is, heat does weird things to metal, so you kind of want to leave it in its clamp position through the heat and cooling process that way. If you just release it while it's hot and it starts to cool, it might start to warp a little bit. Dave also cut out some more plywood templates which are gonna work kind of like so. That way we can really lock all our steel into its shape before we weld it. So I've gone through and done a lot of my preliminary grinding on the corners and obviously on the faces up here. And you'll see there's a little bit of pitting in there. Obviously, I'm um, on your first grind pass, sometimes that happens. So I'm gonna come in right now and fill all that with some more weld and then we'll come back and grind it hopefully smooth on the second time. Sometimes it takes a third time. All right, well you can see we got most of it out. We still got a little bit of fill we've got to do up top there. Let me get my finger out of the way so it'll hopefully focus, but not bad, not bad for the first uh, go at filling in. I'm also not a welder, so don't hold it against me. All right, so I think I've got it uh, all welded up and ground down pretty good. There might be a little bit of deflection in there because I did get impatient at some point. Dave's over here working on the jig for our tread, like, I don't know, what tread pieces, I guess, that are going to be uh, mounted in here, and that's what's gonna hold the tire up the entire time. And then obviously these two giant pieces over here, that's gonna be for our ramp. And then uh, we're just gonna keep chugging along. Dave, this looks great, buddy, great work. Dave drops his template straight into place. There we go. So now Dave is tacking the tread plates into place. Now you guys might be saying, Rhino, how come Dave's doing most of the welding? Well, Dave is a much more seasoned welder than I am. And the fact that a lot of the weight of my truck's gonna be sitting on this in front of people on display, you know, I will swallow a little bit of pride here and let my good buddy, uh, <laughs> you know, weld it up probably better than I would. 
so that he can blame somebody else if anything goes wrong. <laughs> I mean, that also works. So we've got our tread plate all welded up. Now we're trying to figure out exactly the proper way to attach these legs and keep them so that they're all like true to each other, being that it not only kicks off at that angle, but that angle and that angle. Hit it. Yeah, dude. Dude, you want to go tell that guy to stop digging through the trash? Hey. Hey, guy, don't be digging through our trash, buddy. What are you looking for? Nothing. Chris? Dude, if you fall on hard times, buddy, you just let us know, man. Got 20 bucks. Tiny? Yeah, Dave, Chris needs 20 Tiny. bucks. Tiny! Tiny! Dave, how are you, man? Doing good. Doing dude, good, dude, looking good. Looking good. Welcome back. He needs 20 bucks, he's falling on hard times, man. Oh, well, come on in, man. We'll put you back to work. Hold on, I gotta know something, Chris. Are you here spying for Carlos? Is that what you're doing here? What are you talking about? Really? Yo, we Team Carlos over here. Yeah, no, 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 no pictures. No pictures. That son of a gun. And you were gonna pay him 20 bucks to work with us. We figured it out. Chris is over here spying for- Working for Huawei? Dave already pre-marked this whole plywood for the base of this. You got that, buddy? Come on. Well, sometimes, you know, as tack welds do. <laughs> All right, hey, you want to retack that? Yeah, I do. All right. Don't tell Carlos about well, what's going we'll, on. We'll, we'll edit that piece out. So we think we've managed now to get all of our uh, geometry correct with, as you can see, we kind of got the layout on the plywood down here, as well as these blocks that are uh, holding everything in place. Dave's going around to throw a little bit more tack welds on this thing so we can flip it over and actually final weld it all the way around. So originally our plan was to do the entire frame at a two by two square tubing here. Sorry, I just put that right in your way, Dave. But one thing we're running into an issue is being that we're on like a couple different angles here um, is when you go to put the two by two in there, number one at that angle, obviously you can see the piece ends up being longer than the two inch side of the leg going up and down. And then, when you actually made it to the piece, being that the angle is going in as well, you start to kind of see an ugly gap opening up there. We don't like that. So, we're making an executive decision at this point. We're gonna switch the lower, I don't know what we're gonna call them, portion, to one by one. And really all that job is is to keep the thing from splaying out. Um, structurally, the weight's down, I would say. I don't know, I'm relying on my engineer, Dave. Hopefully it doesn't like end up like a dog on a wet floor where like they're just all spread out. But I think we're pretty confident in this setup. And then at some point, um, we're probably gonna end up with some like water jetted out or plasma cut plates that are really gonna end up working like kind of like gussets in the middle of this portion. Um, you know, with like work for it or something on it that'll help structurally keep this thing from wanting to accordion or pancake onto itself. And worst case scenario, if I drive up on it and it just completely falls apart, it makes a great video. All right, let's see if the one by one piece fits. Beautiful. Oh, Dave's got his side going on over here. How's your side look, Dave? Looks pretty good. Hey. We've got all of our bottom braces in place. Dave is now going around. He's going to uh, essentially finish weld every portion of the piece that he can reach in this orientation. Then we're gonna flip the whole thing over because if you remember, these legs are just tacked on right now. So we wanna add some uh, rigidity to it before we flip it over to make sure here's nothing a, spreads out. Here's a, a fun fact is like welding, you're dealing with melted steel, which is liquid. So when you're welding, you wanna be so the liquid is here. Like if you try and do a weld along here, it's goofy because everything's dripping all of a sudden and so it's really hard to control so the part of the welding game is to try and figure out how to get everything set up so that you can then rotate it to do as many welds like using gravity to your advantage or to where gravity is not trying to screw you as possible. Let's see how heavy she is Dave. So far. It's got some good hand holes on Right? All right, well everybody, we've got the elephant stand portion of it finished. Dave, climb up on that, buddy. Let's see, if it can hold your weight, it's got the truck. All right, well, I mean, careful. Typically, I'd use a ramp to get up here. Well, we don't have the ramp yet, so you're just gonna have to. Motion. Yep. Motion. Careful, careful. Woo! Yeah. I don't know. It feels uh, 
feels pretty good. Though. All right, you feel safe? Huh? If you were a truck, would you feel safe? Uh, well, it depends on the truck. I mean, I'd like, let's put a truck on it and see. Fair. You got a truck? I don't even have a truck. Yeah. I'm working on it. So obviously, um, you know, we still have to build the ramp and everything. This is about as far as we're getting for today. I would call the pedestal or the stand, the elephant stand, I guess we're calling it. Essentially done other than having the water jetted out plates that are going to be on probably both sides, maybe the front, maybe the back. Here is what our ramp is gonna look like. And then, like I said previously in the last video, the ramp's gonna be removable. Therefore, there you go, Dave, Dave's the pit crew. Or you can steal it, one of the two. But uh, yeah, that's as far as we've gotten. Like, no offense, Carlos. Like, I know you didn't even make yours. But I'm afraid our stand's kicking the shit out of your stand. Oh! Uh, like, that's for sure. And with that, we're gonna wrap up this video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that we do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, aka a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workforwardapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. Roll that outro. Damn. Uh. Yeah.